Good afternoon and welcome to day 101 in our readings from the Bible. We are at the moment looking at the early monarchy for the period between Saul and Solomon and today we are continuing with the story of King David and uh, how he consoled his wife Bathsheba who gives birth to Solomon who was to be his successor. We're reading now from the second book of Samuel, chapter 12, verses 24 to 25. Just a short reading today, but lots in it. Then David consoled his wife Bathsheba. They made love, and she gave him a son. David called him Solomon. Yahweh loved the boy, and told Nathan the prophet to call him Yahweh's loved one. The evil that David had done was not that he loved Bathsheba, nor was it that they enjoyed normal conjugal relations. The evil was that he had stolen her from her husband, he had tried to conceal the fact that they'd had an illicit affair, and when he was unable to conceal the pregnancy that followed, invented a plot to get rid of her husband Uriah by having him placed in the most dangerous place in the line of battle. In the eyes of the priestly editors of this story, David was supposed to be a better king than his predecessor Saul. So in this story, there is not the same sense of rejection from Yahweh with David as there had been with Saul. David repented. He accepted his punishment and he was forgiven. And here today he makes amends. He does the right thing. And finally he plays the part of a good husband by loving and consoling his wife. The sign of God's approval was to be the birth of Solomon, whom God chose to call my beloved. But sadly, this was not to be the end of David's troubles. He was to survive an attempted coup d'etat by another son, his eldest, Absalom. At the end, Absalom was defeated in battle and killed, which broke David's heart. The rest of the saga of David you can read in the last five chapters of the second book of Samuel. David also gave us the gift of his poetry and his, <clears throat> his spirituality in a number of psalms that are attributed to him personally. The famous 23rd psalm is attributed to him as are many of the psalms that follow it. His saving grace was his trust in God, who was with him in his successes and in his failures. And God never ceased to want the best for him. In his old age, David was nursed by a good-looking young woman. and The priestly editors made a special point of telling us that although she slept beside him, it was only for the bodily warmth, and they never had sex. When David died, everyone except his eldest son, uh, everyone expected his eldest son uh, to, to become king. But, but now that Absalom was dead, the next in line was Adonijah, the son of David and Haggith. Tomorrow we shall see how it came to pass that the succession went instead to Solomon. Once again, these ancient scholars want us to know that God does not always choose the obvious, but instead the one closest to his heart and to his future plans. See you tomorrow.